Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's so good to see all of you this morning. I hope we had a great last week. And I do want to wish all of us a very happy New Year, Bengali New Year. So we have been studying out the book of Matthew. And last Sunday, if you remember, we had studied Matthew chapter 14, verse 1 to 12. And we saw John the Baptist, who was a fearless champion of truth and justice. And John the Baptist was someone who feared God and followed him and was willing to pay the price for speaking the truth to Herod. And uh, today we're going to continue from where we left last Saturday. And so we're going to go back to Matthew chapter 14 and verse 12 it says, John's disciples came and took his body and buried it. Then they went and told Jesus. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Now we don't know where Jesus went, but he took a boat and went to a private place. I guess he went because he wanted to be alone and mourn for his brother, John. You know, from time to time, we also need a place like that, a safe place, a private place, a time where we can be alone, maybe to mourn, uh, to reflect on our life. Uh, to pray, to meditate. We live in such a fast-paced life today that if we do not take time to reflect and think and meditate, you know, we can just burn out. So let's go read further. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 13, we read over here that hearing of this, that means about Jesus, the crowd followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. So when Jesus came back from his place or from his boat trip, all he, the, there was a large crowd that was waiting for him. In John 11:35, the same time it says, uh, sorry, not in Mark 6:34, it says that when he saw the crowd, he had compassion on them because he saw them as sheep without a shepherd. What he saw was people who were in pain, people who were hurting. And Jesus saw their need and reached out to them out of compassion, met their needs. And so something that we see over here is even today, if you look around, there are people who are hurting, who are in pain, and they don't know what to do, right? And maybe some of us, we are going through the same. We are, we are going through pain and discouragement and are hurting. What should we do? And the Bible says, do what the crowd did. What did the crowd do? They went looking for Jesus. And that's what we understand is when we come to Jesus with our problem, with our pain, with our trouble, he can help us. And that's what we saw Jesus doing over here with the crowd. So let's read Matthew chapter 14, verse 15. So as we see over here that the crowd was so huge, the need was great, and time passed so quickly that it became dark. And it looked like the crowd, no one was wanting to go. They were not leaving Jesus. And the place where they were meeting was a remote place with no food close by. And the disciples did what a normal person would suggest. He told Jesus, hey, can these people go and figure out their food? And also to feed such a huge crowd is not a small task. And that also with no prior planning. It is literally impossible. And that was a very practical suggestion. You know, that's what I would do. I would do the same. I would give the same suggestion. But the response of Jesus to that request, let's look in verse 16. Let's see what was the response. And Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. You know, it looks like Jesus was testing the disciples. Now the disciples must be thinking, Jesus is joking. But then they realized they must have seen Jesus' face, maybe his voice, his attitude, and they realized Jesus was not joking, he was serious. So they again went to, became very practical. In verse 17, they said, we have only five loaves of bread and two fish. That was their response. In fact, the same passage, if you read in John chapter 6, was 8 and 9, you know, Simon Peter, Simon Peter's brother said to him, that is Andrew, that here is a boy who had five barley loaves and two fish. But what good are these for so many people? So we see over here in John chapter 8 that five loaves of bread and two fish was actually from a small boy in the crowd. In, uh, let's read verse 18 to 21. Let's see what Jesus does over here. Now remember that uh, 
that this is a remote place, okay? And this is the miracle that is, this is the only miracle that is recorded in all the four Gospels. And Jesus here we see takes the five loaves of bread and two fishes, gives thanks, breaks it, and gives it to his disciples to give it to the people. And more than 10,000 people ate that day and were fully satisfied. Why do I say 10,000? Because if you read verse 21, it says that the 5,000 that is mentioned is only men besides women and children. So I am assuming that there would at least be 10,000 people. And after all these people ate till they were satisfied, there were still 12 baskets full of leftovers. And that is something that we got to be feeling encouraged. The little things that we have, you know, in God's hand can do incredible things. Sometimes we ask, say, what can I do? I'm so small. I have so I hardly have anything to offer. But that little thing, and look at this. Imagine the small boy who was willing to share his simple lunch. How one must be feeling after this incident? I'm sure that that whole incident changed this small boy for the rest of his life. Uh, and so we see over here that, you know, this small boy, you know, can you imagine the conversation, you know, he would be having with people. He said, hey, Jesus used my loaves and my fish to feed everybody. I was part of that miracle. So don't get discouraged. You know, the little things that we have, if we can just hand it over to God, he can use that and do great things. We see the small boy being generous with the little things he had. I wonder what would happen if all of us would cultivate a culture of generosity in our lives, in our family, in our neighborhood. So two things we learn about Jesus over here. One is by feeding the 10,000 people, he showed that he was God in flesh because only God can take something small, so small and make it so big, so spectacular spectacular with even, even with enough leftovers. And secondly, we also see over here that the little things goes a long way when we give it over in God's hand. Let's see what happens after this. 22 onwards. Now, immediately after this whole incident, Jesus makes his disciples get into the boat and go on the other side while he is still with the crowd dispersing them. He was with the crowd the whole day, literally. And he must have been tired just giving to the people, doing all the miraculous work. You know, when you have a long day, a hard day, what is the, the temptation we have at the end of the day is for us to go back and relax, you know, take it easy. But what we see over here in verse 23 is after he had dismissed all the crowd and sent his disciples away, he says he went on a mountainside by himself to pray. And that's something caught my attention is that you know, we see over here that a uh, human side of Jesus, you know, after a, a victorious day, going back to God in prayer, getting back his strength, getting renewed in his relationship with his father. In verse 23 onwards, it, later that night he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Now, the disciples, he, ordered, he had already sent the disciples ahead on the boat and the boat was considerable distance from the land and it was very windy and the waves were crashing against the boat and it looks like the disciples were struggling and just before the sun could come out Jesus came to the disciples walking on the lake now can you imagine the disciples you know are they struggling in the boat trying to get keep the boat safe and move forward suddenly they see a person walking on the water no wonder they thought that it was a girl that's what i would think if i was in their place because no human being walks on the water and in verse 27 jesus calms them down he says immediately said to take courage it is i don't be afraid it is me it is jesus you know we see over here that you know jesus communicates very clearly that he is truly God in flesh. If feeding the 10,000 people plus uh, uh, with five loaves and two fish was not an enough sign, then absolutely, definitely walking on the water was a sign that was clear enough to show who he truly was. Now in verse 26, Peter is the first person to speak up and he says, Lord, if it is you, 
tell me to come to you on the water now i don't know if peter really meant it or did he say something without thinking which is something that he we was known to do and i and, and i don't know if peter was expecting the response that came from jesus when he said that you know if it's you come to me on i want to walk on the water jesus said come and that must have caught peter complete by surprise and now he's caught up between should i do it because i told i want to do it and if i don't do it i would look like a fool in front of all my friends have you ever been in that situation that's what we saw last sunday with herod where he gave his word without thinking and then when the the his uh, herodias daughter asked for the head of john the baptist he was stuck between looking full in front of the guests or keeping his promise and in verse 29 he said then peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came to jesus i'm sure he must have struggled to let go of the boat as he put his legs in the water that is something that we got to understand over here that you know when god calls us to do some things it can be very risky for us but it is not risk when god is involved and what we see over here jesus keeps his promise and peter starts walking on the water look in verse 30 but when he saw the wind he was afraid and beginning to sink cried out lord save me peter's focus changes from jesus to the wind and walking on water peter becomes drowning in water peter one thing that we see over here is as long as peter was focused on jesus he was doing well he was walking on the water but the moment he took his eyes off jesus and turned to the wind he started sinking as long as he focused on jesus brothers and sisters things will be okay so ask yourself this morning am i focused on jesus or am i focused on the problems am i focused on jesus or am i focused on other people am i focused on jesus or am i focused on what everybody else is doing around me there was a lady who went to his her pastor and told the pastor i won't be coming to your church anymore the pastor responded why what happened for you to make that decision the lady said oh i saw women gossiping about the other member i saw the man that is hypocrite i saw the worship team the song leaders not living up to the mark people looking on their phones during the service and there are so many other things that's wrong in your church the pastor replied okay before you go do me a favor take a full glass of water and walk around the church three times without spilling a drop on the ground afterwards leave the church if you desire the lady thought oh that's easy she walked three times around the church as the pastor asked and when she had finished she told the pastor she was ready to leave the pastor said before you leave i want to ask you one question when you were walking around the church did you see anyone gossiping the she said, the lady replied no did you see any hypocrites she said no did you find anyone looking at their phone she said no then he she asked the pastor asked do you know why the lady said no and the pastor said the reason is because you are so focused on the glass to make sure that you didn't stumble and spill any water that you were not able to see anyone else it's same with our lives when we keep our eyes on jesus we don't have time to see the mistakes of others amen and so we we got to understand no church is perfect you will never find a perfect church our church in calcutta is imperfect because it is filled with people and people are not perfect only jesus sets the perfect example and that's whom we should focus on so as peter is thinking what does peter do he cries out lord save me you know peter calls out to jesus for help as he is thinking you know peter did not ask the eleven of his other friends in the boat to save him he reached out to jesus because he knew who could save him he knew whom he could trust you know so many times we rely on people to help us rather than we going to jesus for our help and for our strength most of the time people cannot help us but god by jesus can help us and so when peter calls out and says lord save me was that even immediately the bible to jesus reached out his hand and caught him 
And of course, you know, he had a little challenge for Peter. He said, hey, you of little faith, why did you doubt? You know, if there is anything that God gets offended by and Jesus gets offended by is our lack of faith in him. Now, when we see, when we look at Peter over here, we can look at Peter as someone who was drowning or we can look at him as someone who failed. But there were 11 others who also failed, but they failed very silently. They failed quietly. They failed unnoticed by others. They failed because they did not even try to do what Peter did. We can look at Peter and we can say, oh, he failed, not realizing that at least Peter walked under water, even though it might just be few steps. In the history, there were only two people who ever walked on the water. One was Jesus, the other one was Peter. You know, many of us are like that disciples. We want to play safe as a Christian. We don't want to risk anything. We don't want to try anything new with the fear of failing, with the fear of being laughed at, mocked at, and made fun of. And in doing that, we are not able to have the walking on the water experience in our own Christian life. Ask yourself, what is God prompting you to do today? What is God asking you to do today? Now, God speaks to us and many times, we know, we don't want to listen to that voice. In Matthew 14, 32 to 33, let's read and close out. It says, and when they climbed into the boat, that is Peter and Jesus climbed back into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him saying, truly, you are the son of God. What we see over here is that the 12 disciples at last acknowledging that Jesus is truly God in flesh. And verse 34 to 36, we know, we see over there as that Jesus goes, he continues to heal the sick. He continues to reach out to people. He continues to bless people. So today, what we noted that Jesus is God and he is worthy of our worship. You know, he is God. You know, repeatedly we saw today in that small chapter, you know, he fed the 10,000 plus with just five loaves and two fish. Only God can take small things and make it big. Jesus walked on the water. Jesus made Peter walk on water. Jesus rescued Peter when he was drowning. Jesus healed all kinds of sickness and diseases, proving us over and over again today that only God can do such a miracle. Jesus is truly God. The second thing we see or we learn today was the little things in God's hands can do wonders. Your concerns, your worries, your fears, your hopes, your families, your relationships, all hand it over to Jesus. He can do something great with that. And lastly, dare to leave the boat. Take the risk. Get out of your comfort zone. Do something with your life that will glorify God. Jesus is worthy of our worship. That's what we learned today in the small little chapter of Matthew chapter 14. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. Have a great week.